haven't watched these in a while, but for a while these were six or seven grand. Yeah, it's a four grand, someone wanted to steal it. <laughs> wow, beautiful. Is that nice? It's like, how's that for a work of art? Good morning, team. Good morning. How are morning. you guys? Good. We got a cool one today. So we're gonna go to Tommy DeFranzo's house, AKA Twin Mill Tommy, which is one of the most famous Hot Wheels ever. He actually built it, it's at his house. He's built some other cars that have been immortalized as Hot Wheels. He's got some cool stuff to show us. But the main reason we're going over there is there's a 67 Shelby GT500. There we go. There you go. Local guy, had the car since 1977. It came up. And of course, it was a ward who could get there first. So I called Tommy, I said, are you close to this city? He's like, yeah, four and a half miles. I said, I'm sending you some money, go get this car. He goes, you don't want to look at it? I'm like, nope, go get it. Wow. So he goes, well, I'm not a Shelby expert. I said, well, no risk, no reward. So let's go see what we buy. So this is your new concept you're working on? This is the concept car. Okay. It's starting with the 59 Cadillac taillights in the front. Well, I can kind of see 58 Corvette in it. Oh, yeah. See some Mustang in there. What did you say, 59 Cadillac? Yeah, all the builds I do, I kind of incorporate it. My son's Rocket Boy, he's a drifter. So we kind of use that as his logo that we're doing. But even the Twin Mill has a Cadillac. And the sun's out today, holy cow. This car is not cut or buffed yet. It's probably not even gonna be the color it's gonna be, but when I start fabbing things for, so I can see what they look like, um, I shoot them, I shoot them. And it's got a Lexus paint, kind of glows. What color are you leaning towards? I, I may even go with a poppier red. You know, that Ferrari, oops, excuse me, that Ferrari red color. Yeah. <laughs> it's got five inch Kenworth exhaust, Mustang so doors. 58 and 63 Corvette going on in the back. Well, along with this is where fastback the, Mustang. This is where the fuel cell's going. Okay. And it opens up. You know, that was just an emblem on a 58. Wow. And the, the bumper is a combination between, between a 67 and 58. I'm trying to make it look better. I may go bumperless, but look inside the light. Man, that's a lot of work. Cadillac yeah. Cadillac. Wow. You should see the underneath of this car. I so mean, how many hours do you have in this already? Uh, probably over a thousand. Yeah, I mean, I we, that, like my son being well, we, we hand built this frame too. We build our own frames now. It's got '69 uh, seats in it from a Corvette, kind of like like that theme. Um, it's made to fit a six-speed tr um, Tremec tranny. So is it a Corvette wrecking yard around here? You just go grab all this stuff out of it. This just car, it? this back end was on eBay for for no dreamers, no nothing. So I called the guy, went and took a look at it. And he said to me that, um, he goes, you know, I got it. It's been in my grandmother's backyard for years. So I went out and looked at it. And I said, it's going to cost me more money to get it out of here. And uh, I said, I'll give you 250 for it. He said, oh, no, no, no way. And I walk away. How's 300? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. But it had no frame, Dennis. No frame. It's got the, vi the VIN numbers were on the, f the, the carcass of it. Really? But yeah. Well, that's so, cool. So there's probably. So it will actually be titled as 58 Corvette? Yeah. So I want to build like 16 of these cars. And so what I end up doing is buying a $25,000 Corvette, selling off the parts and using using them to, to do this. This probably, I don't know, it's gotta be a month's worth of work just in the hood itself. Wow. And the bottom of the car looks like that. It's, if, it's, if it's not powder coated, it's it's uh, it's got some wicked paint on it, and the, or it's chromed out. So this is one of your creations that you haven't shown anybody yet. No one knows about this car. I, I wanna maybe finish it for SEMA. Okay. Cause Usually my cars, people walk around them a couple hundred times before they can see all the little details that we put in. I've I mean, already, look, I've already now, seen five, you're, you're, five you're cars are, in this you car. You are a pre-professional car guy. Look at this grill. Tell me what you think. Well, I mean, the front, the front of the car is kind of 275 Ferrari-ish. Yeah, yeah. I see where you went with that. I borrowed that from Wayne. I made it a little longer, a little bigger. And made then it I would, 50 I would, engines. I would say it's, it's Corvette again. 50, yep, 50. So with the, the car, I got the grill, the 58 grill, Cut the took the centerpiece out, 
cut it, Frenched it back in, welded it, put it back together with 65 Mustang GT lights. And that's the, that, this piece, I don't know if I'm going to stay chrome or not, but that's where the intercooler fits because it's going to get two GT40 V8, so it would be a 16 cylinder twin turbo, of course. I put the coves into it. These are steel. I rolled that with my English wheels, so those ain't fiberglass. I hate fiberglass, so mostly I got rid of most all the fiberglass. This is bonded right here with 3M with, with studs in it. Okay. And then and I, and the, this is all metal from here forward. Kind of did a Shelby influence with the with the uh, side skirts. Morning, on. guys. Morning. How this you guys thing's... feeling? Amazing. Good. You? I thought you'd bring me one of those coffee walk shirts. Ah, it's this guy. <laughs> he brings those. <laughs> I'll mail you some. <laughs> this thing's awesome. It is. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So I'm, I'm making some headlight covers for it. Well, can we see the twin mill too? Oh yeah, it's right here. It's actually my office is going to be here, and this is where the twin mill will be sitting at when I'm done with the garage. But wow, look at that thing! There we go. So Alex, this is the vision I have for the pinstripes on the '66 coupe. Okay, we can do that for you. Old school '70s stuff. That's awesome. Did you get one of those for everybody? What'd you do? That is us. They're making me one million of those. Are they really? Yeah, and all the money goes to make, which the back signed by uh, Ira Guilford, who signed a car. Are you giving this to me or are you just showing no, it to no, me? No, no, no. Thank a you. Yeah. That's a prototype. That's a prototype. That's so, awesome. So basically, I signed the middle, and they're 25 bucks. The money goes to make a wish. Um, because of the pandemic, we really didn't push them, but I really want to start. Well, I'll buy one when we're ready. Let's yeah. go. I'll, I'll buy one for Alex. Yeah, that'd be cool. Toy car club. How cool is that, James? That is rad. Sure. What the heck? Awesome. This car was built by me, my son, and one other guy who helped me do the body work in paint. Is it all Yeah, it's got a lot of war scratches on it anyway. Are those tough wheels on that bike? Oh, yeah. That was my BMW. I was nine years That's old. That's the bike I'm looking, been looking for. I was nine years old when I bought that bike. That one's for sale. How That's much is that? That one's not for sale. That one's for sale. That's a ramp bar. With tough wheels on it. I'm not familiar with the Rampart. I used to ride a Webco. Oh, God. But it's, but it's I, very similar. I sold out a ton of my, my BMX stuff. This is real similar to Webco. Yeah. It's got the web in it. I'm glad you don't like it because. How much is that $200 bike? That's a $1,200 bike. <laughs> <laughs> the, Mongoose, oh, no. the Mongooses are worth a ton of money, too. Are they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can sit in this car. I love this. It's I made love around, the way it's, it's made around me. Center steer like a McLaren. Well, yeah, and it's. Is, it's, is that why you did that? Well, no, it's a Make a Wish car, so I needed to be able to make. It's got four roll cages in it, and it's basically so I can fit in it. So you'll you'll be able to fit in it. And you put kids on either you side. Put shoes off probably easier. You just slide right in. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You just go ahead. And slide in. I haven't cleaned it. It's, it hasn't been at a show in two years because of this ridiculous pandemic thing we got going. Yeah. Grab the roll bar behind you. It'll be probably easier. <laughs> and then shoe your feet in. It's like being in a Formula One car. How cool is that? Corvette steering wheel. So I made a parts washer out of the matching number 69 Corvette that I cut apart. Yeah, pull it back. It should fit right there. That's okay. So two motors, two transmissions. How do you keep them in sync? Two of everything. With your mind. So, so Dennis, it's like Dennis, driving a boat. With your mind. Yeah, so it's like driving a boat. Yeah. So with the throttles right there, gotcha. you can drift this car right or left using the throttles. That's, <laughs> that's, awesome. It's a thousand wow. horse to each one. You put this one in drive, that one in reverse, and you can do a whole shot in a circle that no other car can do. <laughs> it's like a skid steer. We're going to be showing that pretty soon on no our, sh our show. Yeah. This is true. This, this is out of a, a 300ZX headlight. It glows. At night, that thing was on the side. I had it in my carriage house, and that, I would shut the shop down, and the car was like getting, getting its personality, because I'm like, son of a it's starting to look like that car. And I'm walking out every night, it was scaring the out of me, this light glowing, and it was just picking up the, whatever light That's was so in the shop cool. was that, that right there. That's so cool. That's cool. So I went to Monster Truck University and trained on the Monster Trucks, and mm -hmm. it was kind of like this. This, you hit that. <laughs> if I put fuel on it, it'll start right up. It's loud as loud could be. <laughs> Twin thousand horsepower. Motors. Twin thousand, yeah, uh, Big Al's Toy Box in uh, Gaylordville, Connecticut built the uh, built the motors for it. Well, this would be fun in a parking lot, that's for sure. Oh, we're gonna, <laughs> we're, we're gonna burn the tires off this thing real soon because I have to touch up the paint and stuff. Um, Six by nines. <laughs> you know how long it took me to engineer that? That's crazy. Look at the flop and the color. 
Oh yeah, this thing outside is killer paint job. PPG. I, mean, I mixed this, Nick. This is my paint coat. This is called Tommy's Purple Passion with Ruby Slippers. How many inches are each of those motors? Uh, I have no idea. He builds dragsters, so he. I just so I've heard. I've heard that term Ruby Slippers in paint before. Is that red metallic that you're just throwing in there, or what is it? We, it's got, this is like a, you know how you have tri-coat paint? Yeah. You have your base, then you throw in your your coat that has your, like that car, it's not buff, but, yeah, but it has its metallic in it, and then you could put another clear, then metallic, so it like suspends it, because this the back of this car, when it's out in the sun, it looks like it's a foot thick. Um, you can kind of, you, you got well, you have a, cell, That's so cool. you have a cell phone with a light? I do. Grab a cell phone. I actually know how to use it. And check, check. Put this Since I can't even remember to bring a flashlight. Flashlight. Yeah. Of course, it takes me a while. It's got the Kragers Boom. on it. Look at the paint. Wow. That's Look. crazy. Isn't that cool? That's really neat. And now this car, is, and this is, this, is, this is all metal. There's no fiberglass. And my son, like I said, he was nine years old when he welded this car. Now he's 18. But this is all heat treated. Another Powder Cadillac coat. tail light. Cat, there's the Cadillac tail light. The radio is inside here. That's being, cool. being a plumber, those are glass. You, when you turn, the, when you start the engines, you can see the antifreeze running through the radiator. That's cool. You yeah. know what, Alex? I think he spent more time building this than you built, have spent building your Challenger, maybe. Yeah. One of your buddies, I won't say his name, I don't know if I can or not, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. walked around this car with Aaron okay. and said, we got to step our game up. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know at the time you, you I think this was you, part, of, part of the influence for the Midas Monkey. Yeah, I think that's yeah. when, uh, and then like you, you were starting to build a Midas Monkey. And that car turned out really well. We that's drove, a, we, I love we, the flake in that car. We drove that car really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. And it's a neat car. Yeah. This, this thing here, you know, we should probably just throw some fuel on it by the end of the day. I can start it up if we have time. It's incredible. This car, yeah, that, that this, was... this car had a show, when it starts up, mm -hmm. the whole show comes to this car. Sure. If they haven't seen it already, oh, yeah. I mean it's, it's like, just it's we, loud and it's we took we took the, crazy. the 2022 Copo to a show yeah. with the 572 in it, yeah, and they did the same thing. You start that up and the whole yeah. the ground shakes. Yeah. Well, the Indian awesome. that sold the Wayne did the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're a Harley guy, a, a, a Japanese guy, uh, as far as bikes are concerned. That that Indian the show you start it and it would just go crazy. Yeah, authorized by him, Ira Gilford. That's he cool. owns the design of this car. That's now crazy. Ira worked for Chevrolet and he got brought in. Um, two Hot Wheels from 67. He drew this car when he was a young kid. When he seen this, he cried. He goes, you're the only person so far that has done one of my cars that I can say it's spot on. I mean, these, these motors are 350 Chevys. I, wow. I spent 100 hours almost on both of these valve covers on both sides. They're welded together. So these, these, are, these are gas tight. This is, this is where these drop down through and tie into the header. This piece right here is identical to this car. If you take a magnifying glass, I didn't, I didn't design this car, he did. Yeah. And in his homage, I just said, you know, I'm gonna make it as close as I possibly can. See the bottom of the car? I'll show you, next. it's next to the Shelby. The bottom plate that says Hot Wheels, Mattel, and it says pat really patented, cool. is this Have you seen that trick before, Alex? Because uh -huh. you, you can buy valve covers like that for 440 Mopars. Uh -huh. And so when you open the hood, people think it's got a Hemi in it. Yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they awesome. make those. My, not many people know what that engine is. I say, yeah, it's a experimental Chevy Hemi. <laughs> it's like I call it the Chevy Hemi. And they just look at it and I start it and they think, once you start it, they just lose their cookies. So it's, it's yeah. like they don't even care about what it is. Wow, that's outstanding. Thanks for showing that. Yeah. Yeah. Can we see the Shelby now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did buy something, huh? I actually already <laughs> bought that. I sent you the money. <laughs> You're not scared of anything, are you? Nah. That's a project, Alex. Yes, it Don't is. get any ideas. No, thank you. <laughs> this is gonna be Goldwing too. This is this part of the truck I just cut off will attach to the door, so it'll go. It'll oh, go, that's awesome. It'll go up like this. <laughs> and look at the 7.3 diesel right there. I had to move the I had to move the engine back a foot and a half in the chassis. I cut five and a half feet off the chassis, welded it back together. Look at the dip, Dennis. Look at the dip, look at the drive shaft on this thing. What, what, what there is in the drive shaft? Does it have a drive shaft? <laughs> it's the shortest possible drive shaft you can use. I still wow. had to move. I had to move the wheels back. The whole thing. It's basically just a CV part of the yeah, drive shaft. I had to move it back four and a half inches, which now I got to. It's got it's on bags in the front, uh, Kenworth bags, and I, I'm putting them also here. So I got to cut and French the frame in to get the bags in. Got rid of pretty much all the leaves. 
So right now it's at its lowest, so I'll build it the way it sits, so it looks like it's melting into the ground. And I can, and with these bags, or Kenworth bags, it'll, it'll bring it up 10 inches if you want. Are you gonna do like show body work too, or is it gonna be like patina style? You know, Larry, Larry from Hot Wheels has helped me with this okay. build. He's, do, he's drawing the interior. He drew the interior of the twin mill right there. Um, it's on a wall. You can kind of see it. This one right here. Oh. Wow. Because they never had a three-seater. So the twin mill was built in this garage? We built this in here. It was all wide open. The paint booth, this is a studio now. Okay. Paint booth, it's full blown, uh, you know, paint booth. But yeah, we built it right here. And my father walked in one day, didn't know what I was doing. He goes, what are you doing? And he goes, holy cow. Because he's seen the two engines. Yeah. My wife walked in and said, what's those shiny things right there? Those look like they're expensive. No, no, they're not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Blowers are cheap. Yeah. <laughs> That's really That's cool. Right. All right, let's see the Shelby. Okay, so, so this car was local and it was Paul McNally's car? Yeah, Paul McNally, a buddy of mine. I, uh, that car that we uh, had at Bear Jackson that you drove on stage with me, mm -hmm. I bought that from him, spent a ton of dough on it. He always had this, and I was always thinking about this car, and then I got a call um, probably about two weeks ago, and he told me his uh, girlfriend told me that he had leukemia and wanted to see if I wanted the car, because I was always on his list, obviously, I was first choice. So he called me, that's what I called you. And right. Pulled the trigger like that. I call all my buddies who I know, and they're all like, you know, day late, dollar short. Yeah, I said, <laughs> just send me your wires. You're like, yeah, I'll take the car. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's a, you know, it's a great buy. It does need some work, but it's a survivor, you know? Yeah, so I mean, I looked up the history of this car. It is a factory line gold car, four yep. speed car. What's really neat is these mag stars, and some people call them they're Kelsey Hayes wheels. Didn't you name someone after that? Yeah, my daughter. <laughs> Only 133 of these cars. Yeah. Of the 67 GT500 line gold cars got that. Really? Yeah, so that's a really rare option. Yeah, well, we're going to start it up once we get it out of here. It sounds like. Then, I always thought 350 Chevy sounded the best. This car sounds magnificent. I think it's got a bigger cam in it, possibly. Yeah, you can sit in it. There's a steering wheel. This thing's pristine. Yeah, that's expensive. Steering. I almost sold it on you. Someone, oh, offered, someone, that, someone so offered me four grand for so the steering it wheel. It looks like this has been color sated, but it hasn't been cleared. Yeah, it hasn't much. cleared. They tried, to, they tried to make it look as original as possible. I wish they didn't. I think we just cleared it. Keep it. I haven't watched these in a while, but for a while these were six or seven grand. Yeah, so four grand, someone wanted to steal it. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Is that nice? Take it. How's that for a work of art? Yeah. And now, if you look in the door jam for the door warning tag, Shelby took them off. Is it missing one? Yes, no, that, that didn't come with them. Yeah, I looked at it. Oh, didn't you get pissed about this one? No, no, they didn't have it. it. They actually made more GT500s than they made GT350s. I just threw a little WD on that latch because it's a little thicker. You got to kind of push down on it. Inboard headlight car. Yeah. See right here? As opposed to the later ones, outboard headlights that went here. And they crammed a huge engine in there. Look at that thing. Isn't that a piece of art? <laughs> so here's one of the issues with the inboard headlights. Cause them run hot. Yeah. So you can Water. see somebody somebody put an electric fan in there. Yeah. That's why it's there. Yeah. So it's not correct, but it definitely makes sense. But this <laughs> this guy owned his car since he was 17 years old, no budget. Didn't know, obviously, that the cars are going to be worth today. Mm -hmm. So he drove the hell out of this car. And he won a lot of races. He had, you know, around Worcester, Massachusetts, where he's from, Auburn, you know, Paul had the reputation of you know, one of the fastest street cars out there. Because this car, all that. And he had no fear either. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So here's the Ford number, Alex. Yeah. <clears throat> you want to see an R and a Q? And look to your left, Dennis, there's another one right there. Yeah, that's going to be the Shelby number. And there's your Shelby number. They actually hammered the whole thing here. Okay. <laughs> so you remember on the 66s, it just had the SFM number. Right. This actually has the whole Shelby number. Okay. And of course, GT500, two fours. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. More is better, James. Yeah. <laughs> this car, wait till we start it. This, this car sounds So yeah. it actually, it does run. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't want, I didn't, I told all my guys, don't even walk in a paint booth, don't even breathe. i never seen something so. Now, I don't know why Smashed. somebody would have done that. I have no idea, but you could see some of the, 
the uh, there's a Q there. You can see the uh, yeah. You can see the R. You can the see the R. Q. You can see all that. So these were all San Jose cars. Okay. So you know you work on the uh, 68 and a half Cobra Jet right now. The bottom of the car does not have red oxide. Right. The bottom of this car should have red oxide because okay. it was a San Jose car. So all the numbers are it, which is fantastic. Shelby tag is off of it, which is common, so people could see that number. You didn't get the Shelby tag, did you? No, someone stole it. He said. That's crazy. Someone, someone nabbed it. I. Uh, it wasn't in a car show. He was just had like a. So all, all you got was the title. You didn't get any paperwork. Yeah, he's actually uh, uh, getting me the title for it. Um, we've got the registration on it. Um, it's in the registry. The martyr report was done because someone from Shelby looked at this car like a day or two before I picked it up. Uh, and basically wrote it, and they said, well, we paid for it, so we're not gonna give it to you. Well, hang on a second, I'm gonna show you something. I'll be right back. So. so here's why I was able to pull the trigger so quick on this car, and I think the other guys were nervous because buying a Chevy without paperwork, you, you need a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, I just opened one of my older registries, and it showed that Paul had had the car since 94. That's probably when he first started showing it. So I called a friend of mine and said, when was the first entry for Paul McNally's in 1977. Yes, that's when he bought the car. Yeah, so I mean, Look at that. the fact that I knew this guy had it since 77 is more than likely the real deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then from there, you had sent me the pictures of the Ford numbers. So once I was able to pull the Ford number. Did you finally pinpoint where it was? Because it was a, that's right, the, the zero I thought was a zero was a Q, I think. Well, there was some, there was some typos on some of the paperwork on this car. Yeah. The three was a one. Really? And I don't know where that all started because it's clearly a one. Yep. But on some of the paperwork that Paul had and you sent to me, it was a three. So really? that wasn't hard to figure out. I mean, it's like I've got the number. So once I got that, I went to Marty Auto Works. Oh, you, so you got it. <laughs> yeah. So Kevin Marty, which uh, I've come to know over the years. Yeah. Just, it, I figured he, he's just it. huge in Mustangs and he will. Uh, Is that the tag they took off the door? Correct. So wow. door warning tags did not appear on 67 Shelby's. Um, they took them off. Yeah. So, but what's what's cool is, is, is I can get this extremely fast. But what else I was excited about? And when, Alex, you're gonna like this. You, when did you actually get this? Uh, I can get these in a day. Yeah. When did you get it? Did you bust my balls for, I, no, for I got, a week? Yeah, no, I got it. They got it the day that you sent me. <laughs> the day you sent me the Ford number. Oh, okay. Okay. okay so he's giving me a line. <laughs> saying, oh, you know, you're gonna have act of Congress. You gotta call, call, you know. No, well, to get the sack paperwork, that's true. Oh, really? We haven't gotten to that. Yet. Oh, okay. Okay, no, so we're talking about So, Alex has done quite a bit of research on Tasker Ford because I've tried to explain to him how important Bob Tasker was to all this stuff. Yeah. He, you know, he yeah. and Carol Shelby were really good friends, and the development of all these motors were Bob Tasker. And they were Rhode Island, right? It's a Tasker Ford Shelby. Yeah, it is. Wow. We, that actually helps the value of this car. I actually talked to his son. He's the third, I guess. He, he drag races. He's in, heavily into racing. And uh, I asked him, I said, do you have a task before metal sign so we can put on the back of the car? He goes, they repop them without our permission so you can get one, but we don't have them and everybody wants one. Guess what? I have an extra. It needs to go on this car. It's going on. Alex, Alex just put one because somebody stole it off of our Cobra Jet car. Yep. He just put one on. Yeah. So yes, that's, that's a very cool one. But like I was saying, the, the Kelsey Hayes Magstars, they were also called Deluxe Wheels. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the options on this car, shoulder harnesses, what they all had, courtesy light group, sport rear deck, power, de power brakes, power steering, and tour deck, interior decor group, which was part of the GT package. Yeah, it's got the side um, chrome things on the bottom of the doors that I never So we got this, which is great, because I'd already sent the money, so it was kind of a little bit of a crapshoot. Now, once you have got, you definitively know that your Ford number Can I and your Shelby number. Can I have an extra one of these? No, no, I'll send you one. Okay, cool. Now that you know that your Ford number and your Shelby number match, you can go to Dave Matthews, who is the registrar at SAC, send him those two numbers, and he will pull up the actual original invoice. Boom. That's the original oh, invoice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So then you can go one step further. After you have the Marty report and you have the SAC report, you can go to 1967ShelbyResearch.com. 1967. Okay. Mr. Brian Stiles, yeah. and he will pull this for you which breaks the car down. So, you had 3,223 GT500 fastbacks, 2,000 of them, or, or 1,376 of them were four-speed cars. Mm -hmm. 356 were lime gold. 
2048 were, were the GT500s. The, the other 1200-ish were the GT350s. Yeah. So 356 live gold cars. That's a huge percentage number. Yeah. As far as rarity goes, that is not rare at all. You're talking about 25% paint color. Yeah. But color was crazy popular back in the day. It's color money. For a while, it wasn't popular, and a lot of these were color changed to different colors because they didn't like live gold. Well, this color's back. People love this. Color. Yeah. So the black interior was the most common. So 324 of the 356 lime gold cars had black interior. Parchment was the only other color. Yeah. The problem with the parchment interior is none of it matched. Yeah. It they just, could it never, so like matched. if you were restoring one, it would just yeah. drive you crazy because none of it matches the same color. I like it, but in the wheel type, which is the neatest thing on this car, it's got the Mag Stars, 133. Yeah. Nice. So again, these are the three people you need to know. Kevin Marty, Dave Matthews, and Brian Stiles. So now we, we took a car with no paperwork to the four most important pieces of paperwork. Wow. So there you go. There you go. That's worth a little bit. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and we did, we pulled all this off in a week. So yeah. Yeah, the other cool thing about the car culture is you know knowing Tommy, uh, seeing him at the big shows maybe just once or twice every couple of years. You got somebody you can trust all yeah. over the world. People know that we're chasing '67 Shelby's, and there were two or three guys that knew about this car, but we paid for it. Immediately. Yeah, and we paid, you know, it was not... Uh, no, it wasn't cheap. People it wasn't don't. cheap, but they, 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 they weren't getting huge offers on it because no one really yeah. knew what it was, I guess, but... So, in next week, we're going to go pick one out of the house, but the guy took the 67 GT500 apart in his house. 60, yeah. It is scattered everywhere. So, <laughs> there's your template, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> I think you were stressing a little bit about the one we're about to pick up, but yeah. no more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can have this one until you get the other one together. Cool. So thanks a ton for all your effort to put into this thing. Let's hit a run and get it on the trailer. Yeah, we're gonna get all these parts out of here and then we'll, we'll fire her up. And I'm hungry. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I think I'm gonna change my middle name from this hacker to hungry. That's <laughs> awesome. It'd be fitting. What was that? It's awesome. You have to be out of the house? Oh yeah. <laughs> This hinge is probably a little too strong. Well, this fiberglass didn't fit good when it was new. Yeah. So when you see one that is flush, somebody spent a tremendous amount of time cutting and shaking it. You know the black car we did? Yeah. There's a picture of it over there. These guys, I can show it to them. We must have spent 100 hours just on the hood because the inside was so crappy mm -hmm. that we had to make it look like yeah. this. So this is how the hood is supposed to look. Yeah. So like if you showed up at a, a you know, MCA, MCNA Nationals or whatever, MCMA, I don't know, I'm going to say it wrong, but a Mustang National event, okay. that's how it should look. Okay. If um, it's sanded, sanded? It will bug people to death. Yeah. It's I, I, the front doesn't bug me as much as the, as the rears. The rears fit better, but they didn't fit great. Yeah, look, I mean, I was, but I the was ones that I've restored, I tried, I, I, we spent a lot of time fitting them back. The fitment on the, on the, uh, the rear uh, bumper actually came out pretty nice in this car. Yeah, but see how far this is, this is off? Yeah. Look at that. Okay. yeah. The, well, the, the, the tumbler's not in here. Okay. Um, you, you know, Alex, so you and Josh are kind of scratching your head on how poorly that RS Porsche yeah, yeah. fiberglass deck lid fits. That's just how they fit. Y'all yep. need to quit messing with that. Just hey. put it on the car. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this car is clean, man. Look at that. Look at the quarters. Look at the quarters and the drop offs, Alex. Wow, beautiful. I had a fuel cell in the other one I built. I mean, that car was, I think every little thing we've gone through in that car. And just by standing here, which we both know this, you can tell it's a San Jose car. What is that? But that's a secret. Okay. So don't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, let's fire it up, get it out, get the parts in it. <laughs>
another great day to be alive, gentlemen. Yes, sir. When you can buy a 67 Shelby with a GT 350, a GT 500, half of one or a whole one, it's a great day. Let's get that on the trailer. Yes, sir. <laughs> So we've got some motors that we picked up in Frisco, yeah. hanging out in the warehouse. It's not really our cup of tea. So we're gonna send both those motors to Tommy here in trade for the Pegasus. Pegasus. Mm. I don't know if it's a good deal or a bad deal. I think he's, <laughs> he's getting one over on me, but it's okay. Cause we don't need the motors in the warehouse, do we Alex? No, we don't. Yeah. Well, my kids are gonna love you for it because yeah. this is an SR20 turbo and he can use another one for his other car that's inside. And my, the other car that you haven't seen, the, the twin turbo one year only fly yellow. We set it up to put a 2J in it, okay. and she just never had the money to finish it. So that'll help her out to get that car done, and we'll get her drifting too. So in, I think you in our, where, day. our you warehouses, so nope, you got a deal. Awesome. In our warehouses, we haven't really done the memorabilia stuff. I just kind of wanted to do it, so yeah. I guess we'll start doing it. Yeah, Everybody got, else does. Some of the E-types and Porsches will do that. We got cool parts, signs everywhere. Yeah, I mean. I, could take I think James has just been taking them home and build, build a fence out of them or something. I'm not sure what's I, I have an English wheel in here. I've got really primitive tools that I build everything with. That English wheel. And I can take that and make a pattern out of it or by eye and, and roll it to make that car out of aluminum. That's the X13. If you can ever find a V12 that we can make into a monster, that's okay. kind of what we're looking to do. Last question, which we always sure. ask. It's the best place to eat here locally. I got something set up for you guys. All right, let's get that side down. Let's we go sparkling. eat. So we're at Brignol Vineyards. And we're going to get the private tour of the vineyard. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Alex is really interested in making wine. Right now, this is one of his passions, that and coffee, right? Yeah, it's my hobbies. James likes wine. Love wine. So tell me what you got going on here. 2014, my attorney Timmy wanted to do a vineyard, so we went full throttle and he went around to all the vineyards in the area and said, I want to make a vineyard that actually has a bathroom that people can go to, have a place to do weddings, bottle all in one shot. And in five years, he met his 10 year mark as far as wine. He's won a lot of gold medals and stuff. We're going to meet him in two, two minutes. Great guy. So, should we have a vineyard? We should. I think so. Coffee, wine, vineyard, <laughs> coffee, and wine? That'd be amazing. Hmm. Let's go figure out how they do it. James Deaver, huh? Mmm, smells good. It smells kind of uh, grapey. That's weird. Is that a, is that a term or word? Hello! Graziano is a grape that was originally brought into the United States from Sicily. So it's a Sicilian grape. How'd they get it here? Um, My boat. <laughs> no. What happens is this. When you cut a vine, any grape vine, no matter which, whether it's a wild one or not, you cut a stick with four uh, buds on it. And you can take it and you leave it over the winter. And then you take and you submit, you submerge two of the four buds into the ground and it will grow into one of these vines. So you can go to... So you don't, it doesn't have to, have to be transported quickly? No, it doesn't. So you can go to Italy in the winter and take cuttings from their vines because they have to uh, be cut back every winter. And what happens is you take those, it's called cuttings, you take those cuttings and you plant them and they grow. The issue is, is your climate good enough that it will produce fruit? Who else wanted wine? I said, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yes. It is. Huh, okay. Well, 
Welcome back, guys. How thank are you, you doing? Sir. Good, good, sir. How are you? Good, thank you. Outstanding. We got that at the end. This is out this is this is out of the world. As soon as you posted that last night, I said, that's where we're gonna go. I gotta tell you, it was an excellent, excellent post of view. So this is our actual first wine tasting on Coffee Walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and Alex is not partaking, and neither is James. However, Tommy and I and Zach are. So I've had two sips, and the third sip is we're oh, it's completely acclimated. Cheers. And this is what it tastes like. So Cheers. this is our new episode called The Wine Walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well that would go over, but I guess we could try it. All right, so sir, how come the corks are not on the table or in the bottle? Uh, we do not serve a bottle of wine with a cork in it at the table because corks are for quitters. And we finish the bottle of wine once you open it. Sounds like a t-shirt to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Brandy Pettiford. There's one for you. There you go. And we had an amazing meal last night at Marco's. Just so happens, Tommy catered Marco's in today. And the stuff that we didn't try last night, we're gonna try today. So we got bruschetta and beautiful calamari. Mm -hmm. It's been a good trip for food, guys. <laughs> and cars. Mm -hmm. And wine. So, so we'll see you when the entree gets here. That yeah, looks really good. Okay, when you're preparing the bolognese, is that one of the, the most time consuming things you make? Or? It, it probably is, yeah, because it has to simmer for quite some time. You got to cook the meat and then build the sauce on top of it. So definitely. Um, I don't know that's why I'm enamored with bolognese, but it, it is so good. All good. Yeah. All it, it takes a long time to, to make, but it's also. The best thing if you eat it the next day, if you can't eat it all. <laughs> it sits and it, all the uh, seasonings and uh, you know the herbs soak into the sauce. That's good too. That one's with the hot peppers, just for you. I told him he should take a <laughs> soup. There's nothing better than eating the best restaurant twice. On one trip. <laughs> yeah. I'm fixing to go for the best bite. I told him I wanted bolognese, spicy. Now, I don't know how they got it spicy because I don't see how people are there. I'm kind of no. afraid. Yeah, you can see no. <laughs> I'm red. afraid of this bite. You're kind of afraid. It's like that one chip at the gas station. If you can eat it, they give you 100 bucks. <laughs> I hope this is not that. Wow. It's it's so awesome. feet, just the soup. Oh, just the soup. Okay. Outstanding. So, guys, just so you know, I have two entrees left over. Sir, your food is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Thank we you appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. We will definitely let Great day to be alive. Wine's outstanding. Going to the airport.